Welcome to this episode of the Common Sense Skeptic. It's time for a little bit of fun following a long weekend before getting back to our episodes in the normal production queue. For this episode, we're going to answer a question that's been kicked around in different forums with lively debate from both sides, brought upon by recent rocket launches on foggy mornings in Texas, and a long history of erratic and mystifying tweets covering everything from pedophiles to Bitcoin. Admit it, many times that particular Twitter account has left you scratching your head and asking questions. Well, today we're going to answer one of those questions for you using first-hand information whenever possible to keep it as real as possible. And the question for the day, is Elon Musk a psychopath? Now, some of you are not going to like this episode, but we're going to make it as fair as possible, as fair an assessment as we can, and we're not going to base the results on our opinion. As it turns out in the wide world of internet, there are several online questionnaires you can fill out and discover where you land on what's called a psychopathy chart. It doesn't take very long at all, and the insights they can give you might just cause some self-reflection. This one on openpsychometrics.org allows for a range of five answers from strongly disagree to strongly agree. If we can cite three minor examples to back up the answer, or find one answer that removes all doubt, it will move the response all the way to the left or all the way to the right accordingly. Are you ready for this? And here we go. Statement number one. Success is based on survival of the fittest. I am not concerned about the losers. Throughout his life, Musk has lived and died by the boardroom dramas that he has initiated. He fights openly with competitors in the auto and space sectors. Half the original founders at Neuralink, in fact, people with their names on the company's patents, simply left rather than continue to deal with them. And Musk notoriously went after a fellow named Tim Hansen on Twitter after Hansen publicly announced that Neuralink was barely suitable for basic animal experiments. So does Musk concern himself with the well-being or opinions of others? No, he doesn't. So strongly agree. Second statement. I find myself in the same kinds of trouble time after time. Legal problems in Elon Musk are practically synonymous. Class actions against him personally are building up to add to the over 1,000 active legal proceedings against Musk and Tesla. Musk is also very adversarial when it comes to the SEC, who has had to come down on him hard several times for misleading shareholders through his Twitter account. The Labor Relations Board has found Musk guilty of several violations over time, ranging from union busting to illegal firings. So strongly agree. Statement number three. For me, what's right is whatever I can get away with. Well, the multiple billion dollar class action lawsuits Musk is involved with tell this story nicely. When SolarCity was bought by Tesla, Musk made Tesla pay him a massive premium on top of the share price that strengthened his hold on Tesla. All the way around, that was a complete conflict of interest. That court action moves forward in July of 2021. The next example is the self-enrichment action filed by shareholders where Musk was going to stuff his pockets with billions while Tesla's shareholders have yet to receive a single penny in dividends. And Musk continuously ignores state law when blowing up his prototypes at Boca Chica, which has finally caught the attention of some major environmental groups concerned about the nature preserves that surround SpaceX's launch complex at Boca Chica, so strongly agree. Statement number four, I am often bored. For this answer, you need to look no further than the litany of projects he has underway. Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, Boring Company, used to have Solar City. The man has an attention span of a crack rat. Look at the Twitter feed if you need more proof. So strongly agree. Statement number five. In today's world, I feel justified in doing anything I can get away with to succeed. Well, let's use the union busting activities and tweets that earned him a guilty verdict from the Labor Relations Board this past week, for starters. Then how about opening his California auto plant in the middle of a pandemic, then challenging the local authorities to arrest him? Over 400 employees caught COVID in the past year at that plant alone because of his actions. So yeah, strongly agree. Statement number six. I find that I am able to pursue one goal for a long time. Well, this ties in with the previous question about boredom. The man is unable to focus on any project for any amount of time, but is always there when other people make things happen for him to take the credit. For this example, let's use the fact that he was paid billions to produce Crew Dragon for NASA, but that project fell year behind schedule as Musk was promoting the ITS. Sorry, the BFR. No, Starship. So strongly disagree. Statement number seven. My main purpose in life is getting as many goodies as I can. 
This is stated with certainty in his tweet about accumulating resources to make human life interplanetary. Since the back half of that claim is a demonstrable lie, that leaves him accumulating resources for himself. End of story. Strongly agree. Statement number eight. I don't plan anything very far in advance. The key word here is plan. He makes all sorts of claims about the future, but planning is very rarely part of that thought process, as can be proven by his track record of delivering promised goods and services way past projections, if they are ever delivered at all. So strongly agree. Statement number nine, making a lot of money is my most important goal. Is there any question in this regard? With the number of Hero Pose articles he approved when he became the world's richest man for a couple of weeks, a title he has since lost. Musk is always chasing the dollar, and especially when it's government money. Name a tax incentive and he's trying to take advantage of it. Strongly agree. Statement number 10. I quickly lose interest in tasks I start. This is kind of a repeated question, but he has no singular focus. Seeing projects through to completion in a timely fashion is not his strong suit. Crew Dragon would be a great example here. As Crew Dragon was slipping four years behind schedule, Musk wasn't focused on that task at all. Instead, he and Gwyn Shotwell were out promoting BFR Starship as a Mars colony transport and airline replacement. Although Musk is often given credit for the things his companies pull off, if you add up the time he spends on Twitter or playing video games or doing interviews, it's pretty obvious he's not doing any of it himself. So strongly agree. Statement number 11. I let others worry about higher values. My main concern is with the bottom line. Well, the COVID crisis certainly nailed down this attitude for him. When California was locked down, Musk forced Tesla employees back to work and exposed them to a health risk that we still don't have in check. 400 of his own people became ill because of his unwillingness to protect them in the workplace. So strongly agree. Statement number 12. Most of my problems are due to the fact that other people just don't understand me. This is certainly true. People who listen to him speak are split down the middle into two camps. There are those that think that the pregnant pauses and stammering when he speaks is because he's trying to dumb down complex thoughts to concepts his followers can actually understand. And the other side is those people who realize the man has no clue what he's talking about and generally speaks in gibberish. The latter claim is borne out simply by reading transcripts of his responses to questions. Um, uh, that, that, our, our, um, yeah, so the, yeah, you basically. Strongly agree. People who are stupid enough to get ripped off usually deserve it. Tesla tequila, not a flamethrower, FSD software. Enough said. Strongly agree. Statement number 14. Before I do anything, I carefully consider the possible consequences. The man's Twitter account is an historical record of irrational thinking. His 420 tweet alone cost him $40 million. Destroying Vernon Unsworth on Twitter would be a strong second case. Leaving behind his wife and five children for a British starlet wraps up that trifecta. And he gave his youngest child a serial number instead of a proper name, because that's not going to haunt the kid for the rest of his life. So strongly disagree. Statement number 15, looking out for myself is my top priority. Is there any doubt at all this is absolutely true? Is there anybody on this planet that you think Elon Musk would take a bullet for? Or is he pretty much drinking his own flavor of Kool-Aid and starting to believe his own hype? Whatever Musk is involved with, Musk is in it for Musk. Strongly agree. Statement number 16, I have been in a lot of shouting matches with other people. It is well documented. Musk has a wicked history of temper tantrums and boardroom battles. His staff know that he is prone to rage firings, and that's why they're all told by their supervisors to stay well clear of him, especially when he's throwing tantrums. Strongly agree. Statement number 17. I tell other people what they want to hear so that they will do what I want them to do. Well, for this, let's go back to the Solar City buyout where Musk convinced Tesla shareholders that buying Solar City was a quote unquote no brainer and he lied outright about the state of readiness for their solar roof product. Second case would be the FSD scam that Musk has kicked down the road for five years after recently telling California authorities that the maximum capability of Tesla's autopilot is SAA level two. Another would be convincing venture capitalists to invest in X.com when it was a barely functional shell of a website after the people who founded the company with him, the ones who designed the platform, 
left Musk high and dry following another boardroom row. So yeah, strongly agree. Statement number 18. When I get frustrated, I often let off steam by blowing my top. Again, Musk is known for his rage firings, and this has been well documented over the years. His boardroom dramas go all the way back to his days at Zip2, when the programmers who had to gut Musk's hairball program refused to work insane hours to upgrade his embarrassing code. Zip2, X.com, PayPal, Tesla, all the same story. Strongly agree. Number 19. I would be upset if my success came at someone else's expense. The boardroom battles Musk used to advance himself is certainly proof he does not believe this. He had no problem throwing Martin Eberhardt under a freeway full of buses at Tesla, even though the concept, the design, and the prototype were all created by Eberhardt. Musk deposed Eberhardt as CEO, then kept threatening the man until he left the very company he founded to build his own dream car. Now everybody is convinced that Musk himself founded the company, and nobody corrects that error. So strongly disagree. Number 20. Love is overrated. Musk married his college sweetheart who gave him six children, all sons, one of whom died as an infant. During their first dance at their wedding reception, Musk announced to his new bride that he is the alpha in this relationship. He often told Justine that if she was an employee, he would fire her when she refused to do something like dye her hair blonde as he insisted. And he made her sign a post-nuptial agreement after they were married. What a prince. And he eventually did fire her to shack up with Tallulah Riley three weeks later, whom he would marry, then divorce, then marry, and divorce again. There's an interview where Musk tearfully states that he has a fear of being alone, and his marriage track record demonstrates both aspects of that narcissism. Strongly agree. Number 21. I often admire a really clever scam. Since Musk is pretty much the king of making people believe he has reinvented old technologies, this rates strongly agree. Hyperloop was always a scam. The boring company claims are laughable. $30 tequila that he sells for $250, that's one of the latest. Oh, and don't forget the FSD scam that seems to have been engineered specifically to keep Tesla from dying an early death. Or the ventilators that he promised to build that never materialized. Take your pick. Strongly agree. Number 22. I make a point of trying not to hurt others in pursuit of my goals. So the best examples here at the top of a long list would be how Musk stole Tesla from the original founders, then dragged Martin Eberhardt through the social media mud. Another great example would be forcing his workers back into the factory during the COVID lockdowns. Then we could cite the fact that he destroyed Boca Chica Village and ran the owners out of there for his own purposes. Check out the interviews former residents did at the time and you'll see what kind of an ass he really is when he faces opposition. He has no issues hurting others whatsoever. Strongly disagree. Number 23. I enjoy manipulating other people's feelings. This is especially true of Musk's wives and girlfriends. In fact, there is a published list of all the wacky things Musk expects his significant others to conform with, right down to plan on going blonde, as all of his exes were forced to do. Strongly agree. Number 24. I feel bad if my words or actions cause someone else to feel emotional pain. So three times divorced, attacking people on Twitter, lying about his father and his childhood would all be great examples here. Another excellent example of this would be his former executive secretary, Mary Beth Brown. This woman ran Musk's personal and business calendar for years, right up to and including scheduling play dates with his own children. When the woman asked for a raise after more than 10 years in his service, Musk sent her on a vacation, and when she came back, he fired her. Ashley Vance tells that story nicely strongly disagree. Number 25. Even if I were trying very hard to sell something, I wouldn't lie about it. Where do we start here? The FSD level 5 autonomy at Tesla is an ongoing lie. His 2050 city of a million people on Mars is a lie. His claims about Neuralink are lies. Hyperloop was a lie presented as science that failed miserably, and the Solar City deal again was based completely on lies. So very much strongly disagree on this point. Final statement number 26, and the last statement is, cheating is not justified because it is unfair to others. From a personal mythos aspect, it is definitely cheating to call himself a founder of PayPal. Same for Tesla, he was nowhere near those companies when the paperwork was filed. To say he's the founder at Neuralink ignores the other eight people, all experts in their field, that founded the company with him, when he had no clue, and still has no clue, what they're working towards. 
From a business transaction aspect, the Solar City sale was definitely cheating, and that was all to benefit him specifically. So he has no problem cheating and lying to benefit himself. Strongly disagree. And there you have it. Of course, this questionnaire is not a professional diagnostic tool. But when you score higher than 98% of the other people who have taken a test in primary psychopathic tendencies, and 99.68% higher than everyone else on secondary psychopathy traits, just maybe you should be looking in the mirror with a little more scrutiny. We can already hear the Musk fanboys going, but that's just one test. Let's get a second opinion. First statement, most would describe me as charming and nonchalant. I can turn my charm on and off like a faucet. If you've ever seen Musk in an interview that starts off all smiles, but then someone asks him the wrong question, you'll know he can go dark immediately. A great example would be this podcast clip from NPR, where the host asked Musk about Tesla's COVID policy. Give this a listen. How do you answer your employees who say, I think you're putting me and my family at risk? What do you say to them then? Great, stay home. Stay home. That's it. Yeah. Do they get penalized for that or just what's it's what can they do if they feel that they are at risk? I mean, if, if they have a legitimate reason to be at risk, then, they, you know, they should stay home. Um, and do you feel a duty to pay them and make sure they're OK, despite the fact that you don't agree with how they feel about COVID versus how you feel about Let's just COVID. move on? Just move on. That's what you want to do. Cara, I do not want to get into uh, a okay, debate about right. COVID I want to know. situation. Okay. All right. Okay. I want to finish up talking about... You want to end the podcast now? We can do it. Okay. What do you say? No, we don't. I don't want to end it. I just want to understand where you've got. But I do. I feel like I understand where you are. He completely disregards the topic, disregards the questions, and then he gets angry at the podcast host. So yeah, that's definitely him. Second statement, I do what I want when I want the moment the impulse strikes me, regardless of what others want. This is back to the impulse question. We know he does what he wants when he wants, and most people are afraid to call him out on it. That's definitely him. Statement number three, if something goes wrong or turns out badly, it's not my fault. Well, when Tesla was floundering, it was always somebody else's fault. When he attacked Unsworth by calling him a pedophile, he doubled down several times rather than apologize. In Musk's brain, everything that he did to that dive hero was justified. When the SEC busted him for fraudulent tweets, that was obviously entirely the fault of the SEC, which is why Musk ignored the conditions of his plea bargain that kept him out of jail. So yeah, that's definitely him. Statement number four, I've gotten into legal or criminal trouble as an adult. 1,000 active legal cases against him and just one of his companies. So yeah, he's pretty much the definition of legal trouble. Definitely him. Statement number five. I am easily the best at what I do, bar none. Nobody could ever take my place. While Musk obviously thinks he is the best person at every company to speak about what they're doing, whether he understands it or not. Nobody else speaks on behalf of Tesla, not even the actual chairperson of the company. He's front and center at SpaceX, Neuralink, Boring Company, and even Hyperloop when he was still interested in that. The man apparently doesn't trust anyone else to fill those roles. That is definitely him. Statement number six, I do whatever I feel like doing. I don't care what others think or even if it's illegal. Musk has an obvious problem with dismissing other people's opinions or authority. Hopefully the multi-billion dollar class actions against him moving forward this year will be the comeuppance that he has had coming for far too long. Please, God, let him mouth off the judge in those cases so that he poisons his side. That is definitely him. Statement number seven, every person for themselves. I don't see the point in feeling sorry for other people and I have no desire to help others. Musk could not be bothered taking care of the wife who gave him six kids, whom he left for the British starlet. That divorce was one of the nastiest to ever hit the papers. That is definitely him. Statement number eight, I've gotten into legal or criminal trouble when I was a teenager and not just the speeding or a parking ticket. On this one, there's no record of him getting into trouble as a teenager, although he did run an illegal nightclub in his house for college. We'll give him a pass on this one. Statement number nine, I have no problem or concern in lying to get what I want. The man lies every day about Solar City, about FSD, about Mars, about Starship, about Neuralink, about Tesla. If his lips are moving, he's probably lying. That is definitely him. 
statement number 10, live in the moment is what I say, the future will take care of itself and learning from your past is pointless. If Musk learned from his past, he wouldn't have his sharp temper, he wouldn't have a steady stream of legal issues, and he wouldn't have a rotating door of executives at his companies. So that is definitely him. Statement number 11, I never feel remorse, shame, or guilt about something I've said or done. Going back to the SEC issues and his 420 tweet, he blamed the SEC. He never felt remorse for what he did to Vernon Unsworth or Martin Tarpenning or the former residents of Boca Chica. Definitely him. And statement number 12, I don't see the point in taking on responsibilities of any kind. They just weigh you down. For this one, it's a split decision. He loads up his plate with executive roles at his companies, then leaves others to do the work for him. Does he take on responsibility? Sure. Does he act responsibly? No. So we're going to take the middle answer here. Let's see how he did. Well, that's not good. Psychopathy, likely. And we gave him a pass on two of the 12 answers. He scored 21 out of 24 on this test, when the benchmark for psychopath is only 18. Now, we aren't clinical psychiatrists, so we're not going to come right out and say it, but there are two simple test results that very strongly indicate that some self-reflection and intervention might be in order for someone who appears to have the mentality and resources of a supervillain. Thanks for watching this episode of The Common Sense Skeptic. If you got a laugh out of this, hit the like button and share it with your friends. Then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you'll know when The Common Sense Skeptic returns. And if you'd like to support our videos directly, you can find us on Patreon as backslash The Common Sense Skeptic.